Hi everyone, welcome to the Is It Worth It podcast. This is the self-worth podcast where we focus on how different areas of our life interact with our sense of self-worth and how to build and maintain self-worth. My name is Roshni and I make my content under the name Betty Grew Up. That is B-E-T-I, Grew Up. And you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. I wanted to start off the very first episode of this podcast by talking about what self-worth is and why you need need a high sense of self-worth. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is actually how self-esteem and self-worth are different. So it sounds like they could be very similar or the same thing, but the key difference is that with self-esteem, it is really how we think about ourselves and how we feel about ourselves based on external circumstances. So with a high self-esteem, we're usually looking for proof in some sort of talent or skill or something that we've achieved outside of ourselves. And so it's very performance-based, right? Whether it's on getting good grades or how you do at the gym or where you are in your career, we look at these external things to validate ourselves and to build our self-esteem. And of course, none of these things are bad it's great to have goals you should be pushing yourself and you should be working you know hard at the things that you really care about but self-worth is different and the way that it's different is that it really is about your sense of value and worth and the love that you have towards yourself regardless of external circumstances so the reason that this distinction is important is that you know even if you are incredible at the gym or you're a wonderful athlete if you you know break a bone or you get injured or something like that happens are you still going to feel good about yourself and are you still going to feel valued and loved without that certain outlet in your life so there's a little something that's a little bit more inherent when it comes to self-worth compared to self-esteem and the reason that it's not always good to place all of your value in these external things is that like i said they can get taken away from you you know whether it is a bodily injury whether it's losing a job anything like that can just kind of shake up everything that you've known about yourself and we don't want that core sense of self to be destroyed because of something that happens that's kind of out of your control. All right, so now I'm just gonna get into why you really need a high sense of self-worth. Self-worth, like I'm saying, is based on inherent worth instead of external circumstances. This means that you need to do some work in decoupling a lot of things that society tells us makes us worthy. So whether it's having a high education or going to a certain type of school, having a lot of money, having a certain type of body or physique, having a certain level of attractiveness, um, having a specific type of family or a lifestyle, you know, the list goes on and society is always trying to tell us who we should be and what makes us acceptable and what makes us worthy and when you have a high sense of self-worth you aren't just relying on you know fitting in or being the best in these specific areas based on what society tells you the best is so don't get me wrong you should always try to better yourself so this isn't to say that you shouldn't you know do your best in all these different areas in your life it just means that your entire sense of self-worth shouldn't crumble down because something doesn't end up going your way or something happens that kind of throws you off guard and when you have that high sense of self-worth even if you know something goes wrong or you aren't able to participate in the things that you love or you need to take a break from it that you still maintain that sense of validation and love towards yourself because of that inherent idea of self-worth that you have and you know just an example of this was that you know I was really great at my last job I for the most part really loved the company that I was with but the entire company closed down and about you know three 300 people got laid off so I had to find a way to make sure that just because I was unemployed that I wasn't going to lose my sense of self-worth and that my entire sense of self-worth didn't just come from my performance at this certain job because once it was taken away from me and I was kind of not in control of that anymore I needed to make sure that that wasn't going to crumble every idea of you know who I am and what I'm deserving of. The second reason that you need a high sense of self-worth is that it allows you to be a little bit more vulnerable so you fall 
into the comparison trap less if you have a high sense of self-worth and the reason is that you know everyone grows at their own pace people have different strengths people have a different path in life and when you know that you stop comparing yourself to what other people are doing because you realize that you know what you you have your own unique gifts and talents and your own unique journey in life and that's okay and everyone falls into the comparison trap sometimes i mean these things aren't just going to evaporate with a high sense of self-worth but it's easier to pull yourself out of it when you remind yourself that there are good things about you and that it's okay that you're not at this certain level or it's okay that you're not in like forbes 30 under 30 or whatever because you still have things that you're doing and you still have your unique talents that you're pursuing and people always talk about how you don't compare a cactus to a tree because they grow at their own rates and they have their own purpose and so that's kind of the the way that you should be thinking about this you know people have different rates at which they grow people have different amounts of success and just because someone is successful one day doesn't mean that they're going to continue on that trajectory their entire life so just focusing on yourself instead of comparing yourself to others whether it's a positive or negative comparison is a big thing that comes out of high, having a high sense of self-worth. So many of us feel like we need to fit in to the status quo to be accepted or to be validated. But when you allow yourself to just accept yourself for who you are and you love yourself and you value yourself despite what's going on around you, it's going to be a much easier ride in following your own goals and pursuits. The next thing that happens when you have a high sense of self-worth is that you start to suffer a little bit less. And what I mean by that is that, you know, we all have bad things that happen to us, whether some of it is in our control or whether it was completely out of our control. But when we believe deep down or subconsciously that we don't deserve anything good and that we don't value ourselves, we keep searching for our worth in other people and in their attention, even if it's negative. So it's hard to walk away from people even if they're bad for us because we just need that feeling of being loved or seen so badly that we can change the definition of what it even means to be loved so that we can convince ourselves that even the negative relationship are things that you can't let go of because your sense of self-worth would disappear right along with them and this isn't just with relationships or other people this can apply in terms of financial situations and just all kinds of bad things that can happen bad things happen to everyone right no one is immune from them so when you experience something that's really bad that happens to you you can either accept it and deal with it head on or you can get in this whole negative cycle of feeling like you deserve it and nothing ever good is going to happen to you and even if something is good in your life it's going to be taken away like we can get caught in such a negative spiral if we subconsciously believe that we don't deserve good things and we don't have that sense of self-worth that's kind of backing us up there are so many ways that we can start to change how we feel about ourselves from one event or one circumstance happening especially when it's negative and having that sense of self-worth is really something that can help you get through even the hardest of times and just an example in my own life you know I really felt like I needed to have tons of friends and I always enjoyed having tons of friends and I was a very social person but at the end of the day I realized that a lot of my friendships weren't as strong as I thought and that people weren't really there for me in the way that I thought they were and so when I finally started to grow my own self-worth and develop that I realized that people weren't really there for me like I thought they were and I was able to kind of start to move away from those friendships and kind of distance myself because I realized that I would rather have my sense of self-worth and I could be happy finally being alone or just having a few core friendships in my life rather than relying on the number of people that I had as friends for my sense of validation. So I really was able to be happier alone than I was surrounded by friends because I had that core of self-worth that helped me come to terms with who I am and that made me realize that I don't need these negative relationships in my life. So speaking of, you know, kind of spiraling out of control into this kind of negative self-talk that we experience, that's something else that kind of decreases once you have developed a high sense of self-worth. And what I mean by that is that when we have failures or embarrassing moments or when we make mistakes, 
again, it can go one of two ways. We can either really beat ourselves up for it and say that that's all we're, we'll ever be. We can never succeed at anything and we can, you know, really buy into all of our limiting beliefs or we can realize that because of our core sense of self-worth that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail at something and then learn from it and it doesn't feel like those things are the end of the world. And you know, the three things that all humans really desire and need is the need to feel seen as they are, the need to feel accepted as they are, and the need to feel love. And when you are able to give that to yourself, and of course I'm not saying that you know you shouldn't have any other relationships or that this can only come from you, but when you are able to provide that for yourself, you aren't so embarrassed or afraid to put yourself out there because if you don't have that high sense of self-worth, you feel like you are just gonna risk everything. You're risking those core ideas of feeling loved, feeling seen, and feeling accepted because you don't have that internally. You don't have that feeling towards yourself. So going out of your comfort zone or putting yourself out there and totally flailing is the scariest thing ever. But when you develop that sense of self-worth, you realize that it's not that scary because you're not risking those things. You feel that you have that sense of acceptance and love within yourself. So a mistake is just a mistake and it's not the end of the world anymore. The last thing that I wanted to mention is that when you have a high sense of self-worth, you are able to let go of conditional love and conditional self-love. So what I mean by that is, you know, how many times do you tell yourself, I'll love myself if or I'll love myself when? Or I'll be happy if or I'll be happy when? We tell ourselves that I'll love myself if I make X amount of money a year. I'll be happy when I make X amount of money. I'll be happy when I have this type of body. I'll be happy when I have this kind of relationship. I'll love myself when I have this type of lifestyle and this many designer bags and you know all these different things that we create conditions around, you know? So we say, oh, okay, I'm, I'm not happy now and I don't really love myself now, but it's okay because one day I'll have this and that's when I'll start to love myself. And that is honestly the biggest trick that we play on ourselves because you're not going to achieve that sense of happiness and fulfillment through these external things. And the worst thing that can happen is actually achieving all those things and getting to that place of having however much money or having these designer bags or losing that weight or getting the body of your dreams and then still feeling empty inside. And so many people have experienced this feeling and it's really scary because you feel you put all these conditions around it and when you finally have achieved it, you still feel empty. And the reason is that that feeling is only going to come from that inner work that you do. And it's really difficult, but when you do kind of break those barriers and you start to build and develop your sense of self-worth, you realize that you're happy now and you love yourself now and having a certain amount of money or having these goals or reaching this type of body or having this type of closet or whatever it is that you tell yourself you need, those things just become a bonus and those things aren't you know, the end all be all of what it's gonna take for you to love yourself because you've achieved loving yourself now with your flaws and with your mistakes and with whatever is going on externally and whatever circumstances you're in right now. And that is the most beautiful and most powerful thing that we can feel as humans because again, it makes you less afraid to get out of your comfort zone. It makes you less afraid to pursue your goals because you have that sense of fulfillment and contentment and self-love already instilled in you. So everything else just becomes, you know, trivial and it's not as big of a risk as risking your sense of love and acceptance because you've provided that to yourself. With removing that sense of conditional love, we stop turning to external sources for validation or for confirmation, but we can actually start to feel inherent gratitude and appreciation for who we are in the moment instead of looking to the future for this hope of eventual validation. All right, everyone. Well, that concludes the very first episode of the Is It Worth It podcast. I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something. If you want to connect with me outside of the podcast, I will leave all my links in the show notes. You can find me at www betigrowup.com at my youtube channel betigrowup or on instagram and twitter 
at Betty Grow Up. I also have a online course on how to trust yourself. It's a guilt-free guide to decision making. So if you are interested, I will link that course in the show notes. And I also have created a free PDF on dealing with your self-sabotage. So if you are interested in that, like I said, it's all linked in the show notes. And I will catch you in the next episode. Bye everyone. Happy healing.